just want to welcome everybody today and we'll start with the posting of the colors. I would now like to call up uh, Nick Gehring, who's an engineer for our department, to do the invocation. Before I say the prayer for today's special service or special ceremony, um, I just wanted to take a few moment, moments to express my gratitude to the community of Wassa in general uh, and the leaders of our community for the high level of value that they've placed on the people within our community, the properties within our community, as well as those of us who work within the community. It's, it's, uh, it's an honor to work for this uh, city, and I think I can say on behalf of all of my coworkers who are here, as well as the police department, um, that uh, we don't take our duty lightly working for the city. It's an honor to be here, and um, I'm thankful to be here today. Thankful that you're all here. Uh, it's the mission of the Wausau Fire Department to provide rapid, professional emergency services to protect and enhance our community. And I feel like this wonderful building is uh, going to go a long way to help us do just that for many, many years to come. Um, I was recently reading an article in light of Father's Day, and it was titled, A Noble Four-Letter Word. And I thought it was a pretty catchy title, so I, I read it, and the word was duty. Um, and the, the theme of the whole article was this concept of duty, and obviously it was specific to the idea of fathers, but I was struck by the implications that it had for each of us. Whether we're a firefighter, or a leader in the community, or a citizen, I thought it was very touching, and I wanted to share just a small excerpt from that um, article with all of you. I've tweaked it just a little bit for today's event, and so I just want to share that with you. It says, duty is the handmaiden of love and honor. It is doing that which is right rather than that which is convenient. In fact, failure of duty generally amputates somebody else's right. Duty recognizes a cause greater than oneself. As men and as fathers, as women and as mothers, as firefighters, as police officers, as city officials, as citizens, we have a duty before God and man to do what is right, to do what is honorable, and to do what is sacrificial. I think with everything going on in the world today, we could all agree that um, there's, there's been a lack of duty in many regards. And I'm thankful for the community that we live in that rises to that standard on a regular occasion. And I look forward to the continued efforts of this department, of the police department, and of the city as a whole. So if you'd like to, I'd, I'd ask you to join me in prayer. I'm just going to pray briefly for our uh, department and for our city, and then we'll move on with the ceremony. So thank you. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for a community that values people, 
I thank you so much for uh, the effort that is put into the people who serve this community, the money that's put in them, into them, Lord. It's, it's a blessing to have that and to be able to live here. And I pray for those who work here. I pray for those who make administrative decisions. I pray for this building. I pray that you bless all of them. Um, I think of the duty that you've called each of us to, um, whether it's working for this city or just being a part of this community. I pray that we would live up to that call of doing that which is right, that which is honorable, and that which is sacrificial. I think of the example of uh, the Christian faith where uh, sacrifice is paramount to everything else. And I pray that that would be, regardless of all of our faiths, that that would be um, the common thread through all of us, that we would put one another's needs above ourselves. I think of uh, the statement that greater love has no man than this than to lay down his life for a friend. I pray that uh, while none of us want to die, for um, whatever circumstance, I pray that that would be within us to be able to do that and live up to that duty. I thank you for today's ceremony. I thank you for the beautiful weather. Thank you for everyone here. I pray you bless each and every one of us. I pray this in the precious name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Hello. There you go. Hopefully it'll last. I'm not quite sure, but man. Nick, can you come do that again? <laughs> uh, you know, I asked Nick on Wednesday to actually do the invocation for uh, this ceremony and uh, man just an incredible job that was just absolutely spectacular uh, just touching uh, heartfelt uh, touched the touched exactly how uh, uh, the members of our department uh, feel and uh, man what we will we come to work every day to do so thanks so much Nick um, uh, I'd like to welcome uh, the new mayor, um, Mayor Katie Rosenberg, uh, to the podium. You're going to have to talk loud. She's going to have to yell uh, to say a few words. Thank you. Well, I feel like I have the easy job uh, because I just showed up and this happened. So um, I'm going to be brief because I just want to say thank you to our community that made this happen. Thank you to the previous city councils who um, put this forward thinking project together. Thanks to the chief for seeing it through um, and your team who project managed this while you were trying to do everything. Um, thanks to the police and fire commission for continuing to hire amazing uh, firefighters. Um, you know, in just a few short years, you came here, you changed the culture, you built this thing. So I just, we're so lucky and privileged to have you here. Um, and I guess thank you to the community for supporting this, um, this endeavor. Uh, it's not cheap. Um, but we need it. We care about each other's safety, and this is, again, our duty to each other. So I just want to say thank you so much. Um, you know, this saves lives. It cuts down on um, the response time, um, and it just makes sure that we're all working together as one team. So thank you. That's all I'm here to say is thank you for being here. I would now like to uh, invite uh, Lisa Rasmussen up, who is a member of the council, uh, current council, and she was actually the chair of the council uh, during the uh, most of the uh, building of this building and the approval of this building. So, Lisa, would you come up and say a few words? All right, they told me to use my outdoor voice, so I think I can do it. Good afternoon. Just like our groundbreaking ceremony, today is a great day for Wausau. It's a day to celebrate. It is the culmination of a ton of work and collaboration by public officials, city staff, architects, engineers, contractors, and our fire department. Before I begin, former Mayor Rob Milkey was not able to join us today but ask that I pass along his congratulations at the completion of this facility. Bringing this station to fruition was a priority of his, and he is very proud of this place and the crews who will work here. Please know he sends his warmest regards. In July of 2016, I was the council president and former Mayor Milkey had just begun his term. 
we decided the best way for our council to learn about operations and understand the needs and the assets of city departments was to tour them and interact with our workforce. One warm summer evening, we toured all three fire stations and shared a great meal with the crew at Central. We learned that there were a lot of facilities that needed work in our city. Past strategies forced us to do more with less, and cuts in nearly every budget year during the recession brought us to a place where facilities projects were accumulating and repairs were growing more frequent and more costly. Station 3 needed work in its kitchen area. Station 2 had no accommodations for female crew members. And the area that had been, had been set up was basically a shower and a broom closet. Apparatus had grown in size. The newer equipment did not fit in the garage. Physical fitness is a key part of fire and EMS training. The workout area at the old station two was shoehorned into a corner of the garage where vehicles moved in and out and the air quality was poor until the area was vented of exhaust. The sleeping quarters was spartan and in the winter, frost would accumulate on the edges of the back door. The location was not optimal. Emergency responses from 32nd Avenue began by roaring down residential streets in a quiet neighborhood. We left the tours with open eyes and big concerns. Mayor Milkey and several council members saw an urgent need to begin finding solutions. Through our capital project process, we were able to address the needs at Station 3 fairly quickly. Station 2, though, was an expensive fix and the current building needed enough upgrades that replacement of the station presented the best value for the dollar spent. This year, we're budgeted to make large investments in improving conditions at Central, including uh, renovation of the upstairs sleeping facility and finally fixing failing plumbing and failing fixtures in the second floor bathroom. We have a plan to adjust crowded office space and create a better work environment. Solutions like this are not fast, and they are not always easy. They're expensive, and they require officials to make brave budget decisions, incur some debt, and invest in facilities for the services provided to our city and renovate the spaces of the teams who provide them. This station creates a lasting legacy for those who came together as a strong leadership team to plan for and push these projects to completion. They position Wausau for its future. There were times as this project was underway that Chief Kujawa took time to thank me for my support of the department and this project. But it wasn't me. I wasn't the only one. Without the tenacity and perseverance of a few of my former peers working alongside me to get these projects funded and moved up the list, we might still be talking about someday building a new fire station number two. We planned, we prioritized, we compromised, and we debated. We remembered what we saw on those tours, and we got it done. Those three former council members stand out in my mind, whose advocacy helped accomplish this project specifically. Their support for public safety was unwavering, and I thank them again today. Former Council Member Gary Gisselman, who's with us today, who served on the Council until April of 2020, continued to push and talk to all of us, all of his peers, about the need to take care of these facilities and the people who work in them. Former Council Member Romy Wagner, who served until April of 2018, and former Council Member Karen Kelbach, who was with us at our groundbreaking ceremony but passed away last year. She's with us in spirit today, and she would be so proud of this. To all who will work in this beautiful facility, keeping our community safe, I hope you will always enjoy and love this place. May it serve Wassa well for decades to come. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. So I'd just like to say a few words um, 
Again, I, I'd like to thank everybody for being here, especially since many of you have had a part in getting this project completed. Our department is so humbled and excited about being able to occupy a building that is not only safer and more effective, but beautiful as well. The previous station, as Lisa mentioned already, has certainly outlived its usefulness, and this station is certainly state of the art. Lisa mentioned many of these things, but I'm going to mention a couple more. We no longer have to back into bays. We have drive-through bays. That's such, such a safety concern. There's no risk of backing into anything, including people. The bays, as Lisa mentioned, the bays are large enough. Fifty years ago, fire trucks weren't nearly as big as they are now. We were very compact in that other station. We have female facilities. My goodness, a station without female facilities or very little of female facilities, uh, that was a disgrace for us. We have a pro positive pressure environment within our living quarters to keep up uh, contaminated fuel, diesel fuel exhaust, and things that happen in the apparatus bay. Our alerting system is state-of-the-art. So many components to assist us in our response and to respond more swiftly and effectively. You know, cancer is the number one line of duty cause of death for firefighters. Firefighters do have a higher risk of cancer, in fact, a 9% higher risk of being diagnosed with cancer and a 14% higher risk of dying from cancer. The Wausau Fire Department in the last years have been proactive in putting policies and procedures in place um, for fire scenes and uh, things like that. But we also put that into consideration when we developed the plan for this particular building. The way that we designed this with the decon area, and when you walk through, you'll actually see this. We have a specified area for personal, protect per per personal protective equipment, and we have a specified area to wash that personal protective equipment. And while you walk through, you'll be able to see that. There's no turnout gear into the living quarters, and you'll see those signs throughout the station, no PPE beyond this point. That is something that we take very seriously, and we don't want to invite contamination into our living area. We have our, an extractor out here, which is basically a wash, wash machine to uh, wash PPE. We actually have an extractor here at the station, so we're not transporting contaminated PPE, personal protective equipment, from here back to the central station to get it washed. We actually were able to purchase a dryer. We're not waiting two to three days for turnout gear to dry. We actually can wash and dry turnout gear in about two and a half to three hours as opposed to two to three days. It gives our people the, the ability to be able to get back into their own turnout gear in a timely fashion because it's very important that we have fitted turnout gear. We have a state-of-art training tower. Um, we're very fortunate to incorporate that in this building along with the classroom space. And uh, right now we share classroom space with the PPE, I mean with the police department. I started with a P, that was close. Um, and we're very excited to, to do that as well. Uh, we have four bays at this station. We have a ladder truck here that needs to be here, not only responds to the west side of the station, but for our ISO rating. So there's so many things. This is just a short list of the amenities that makes this station state of the art. We owe a bunch of gratitude to a lot of people for this particular station, and Lisa mentioned several of them. I'll probably repeat some of them, but the old station is just shy of 50 years old, and it wasn't built to be a 50-year-old station. So as was mentioned already, there are many, many challenges with that station. I've been in Wausau just over six years, but the initial planning of the station goes back at least 15 years, as Lisa mentioned. So you can imagine how it feels to come full circle on this project for many, many people. There are many individuals to thank for the success. Although he wasn't able to be here today, I would like to thank Mayor Milkey for his vision for this project, his very understanding of this project, and instrumental in its progression. 
Mayor Rosenberg, I would like to thank you for your presence today and certainly all your support since taking your position as mayor. Thank you. It's great to see all the members from council here today, both the current and the past council. I would truly like to thank the past council for their prudence in seeing the need for this station and certainly their support throughout the majority of the project. I would also like to extend my deepest appreciation to the new council who is here in support of this project. Thank you to the finance director, Marianne Grote, the Department of Public Works director, Eric Lindman, and attorney Ann Jacobson for their support and expertise. All three of them, along with Lisa Rasmussen, were very helpful in the RFP process that we had to move through for hiring of the architect and for the construction manager, and also their individual expertise in finance and legal contracts and project management. I can't extend a, a healthy enough uh, thank you to them. I would also like to thank Eric Lindman for borrowing us Lori Wunsch uh, for her admin support and uh, for all, all her other work that she did for the, the, the station and allowing TJ Nixich to be involved in moving this project forward. CCITC, uh, I don't think Jerry's here today, but man, his people worked really, really hard. Um, I have a, a special place in my heart for IT people. I, I have no understanding of it. So when they come to the rescue, I'm ever so grateful. But I hope I don't miss anybody from CCITC, but Chris and Rick, Wally, Kristen, Chu, Jean, Dale, Jane, all these people, and maybe uh, others that I don't know of, assisted us in getting the station functional and up and running. This alerting system was more than I had ever anticipated, and man, they did such a great job, not only with the alerting system that we're continuing to uh, move forward, but also just getting all our electronic stuff up and running, computers, phones, uh, cameras, everything. Uh, so thank you, CCITC. Uh, Sheriff's Office, um, dispatch has been great. Frank Hanasek and Mike Ivan, uh, this alerting system, we wouldn't have ever been able to put this alerting system, uh, install this alerting system without their support uh, and, and also their encouragement because this means a whole different alerting system for their dispatchers. So we're grateful that they uh, were willing to actually um, go along with uh, that suggestion and, and move that project forward, that, that part of the building, the alerting system. The Building Design Committee, we spent a lot of time together, get together getting this project completed. Uh, you know, Brian, uh, and uh, your expertise in facilities and, and your work ethic, uh, your focus in getting uh, this project done was invaluable to the success, the success uh, of this project. Uh, we were really lucky to have Brian on board. Jeremy, or Jeremy, and your energy and organization, attention to detail, um, help keep us on track and on target. Uh, everyone, you know, it's weird because everybody kind of had a, a little niche that kept this project moving forward. And Dave, where's Dave? Dave DeSantis, Fire Marshal DeSantis. Your building expertise and thoroughness. There you are, Dave. Uh, thoroughness, man, it's very much appreciated. You would catch these little things that I could never see and uh, very appreciative of, of your expertise as well. I can't express to you how grateful I am to the Wassa Fire Department family. Man, this team at the onset, um, just the vision, uh, our first strategic plan was developed in 2016. Part of that strategic plan was the vision of this department, or this station. And uh, those people, those 26 people that sat in that strategic plan and had this vision, thank you for your vision. And, uh, and also all of the different things that you recommended uh, to incorporate into the station. And particularly the last few weeks, uh, moving in and all the cleaning, moving everything, and all the work that you did on top of responding and training and all the things that you had to do. Uh, I, I'm particularly grateful for that. Uh, Mindy Walker, all your admin work, thank you. I appreciate it, like always. Uh, anytime I needed something, uh, I could, any time of the day or night, I could call on her. Chief Bartek, 
Man, welcome aboard and, and thanks for your overall, his overall assistance. Uh, Chief Bartek came in in the middle of this project and has been so supportive and energetic uh, about this project. I'm just so thankful uh, that he's here. And uh, Anagard, thank you for making this a very special day for us. The design of this building is outstanding. Uh, Robbie Krzyzewski, Wendell Five Bugles. Robbie, thank you. Uh, for your expertise in helping us design uh, such a spectacular station and your continuous work throughout the project. Thank you. Um, you know, Myron uh, was our construction manager. Tony, uh, thank you for leading us in that direction. And then I can't say enough about Steve Beckman and Holly Nowak. And before the project started, I didn't really know uh, what the job description of a construction manager was, but I know now and I'm so grateful for you two and your assistance, your diligence, your expertise uh, and direction throughout this project. Uh, this building, uh, I can honestly say, wouldn't be what it is today without both Robbie and, and Steve and Holly. I, I do appreciate your work on that. We worked very well with all our contractors, Cher, Stainless Specialist, PGA, Apex, and Sunrise. Um, they did a great job for us and were always willing to work with us. We had weekly meetings, uh, we discussed things, and, and they were always willing to look at things and step up to the plate, so I'm thankful for that. And I guess finally, I'd like to thank our community uh, for their continual support, you know, of both our department and of this project. Uh, we can't go without uh, thanking our community so much. and and. As Nick had mentioned already, uh, man, we just love serving the public. Uh, so uh, thank you to our community. I hope I didn't forget anybody. I'm going to apologize up front if I have. And I know there's other members within this uh, arena that had a, a little part or part of a vision for this station, so thank you so much. I'd like to move to a, the shovel presentation, if we could. Um, and uh, these are the shovels that we actually used um, for the groundbreaking. So I'd like to uh, first call, call up uh, Lisa Rasmussen, um, former council chair and current council member. Uh, thank you, Lisa, so much. You can stay right there, maybe we'll get a picture. Um, Gary Gisselman, I'd like to call up Gary Gisselman as well. Um, and as Lisa mentioned, uh, Gary's been such a, a supporter of us and the vision of this building. Uh, Gary, thank you so much. Oh, you know what? I missed part of my thing here. I, I'm going to go back uh, in the middle of this because it's important that I do. I forgot the PFC and I had it in my notes here. I must have deleted it at the last second. And I want to thank the Police and Fire Commission for the, I'm sitting here looking at Dennis and Cheryl and what do I do? And I must have deleted it out of my presentation, either that or I just scanned it and missed it. But thank you, uh, Police and Fire Commission. Man, I, I'm just so thankful for your support throughout this whole thing. And, uh, and obviously there was a vision before, uh, there was a, a turnover in the PFC, so I'm just appreciative that everybody was able to get up here and support us today. Thank you so much. Um, now I'd like to call up Tony Patterson, that's what dawned on me, man, I didn't mention PSC. Tony, chair of the, of the Police and Fire Commission actually recently resigned. Thank you, Tony. What's that? I you said you called me up. Yeah, you oh, did. Okay. Yeah, you did do the shovel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no rules. Yeah, yeah, stand up there, we're going to get a picture. Facility Manager, uh, Brian Markoviak, I always get his title wrong, but Brian, is that what we call you? Uh, the Guru, Brian Markoviak, thank you, Brian. Uh, Fire Marshal, David Santis, you gotta come up now, Dave, you can't hide in the back anymore. And uh, last but not least, we'd like to uh, honor Battalion Chief Jeremy Kopp, who was part of the design committee as well. With that, that ends the, the speakers. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move outside for the inaugural uh, flag raising. 
So we're gonna just open the door. Uh, thanks, Bob. <laughs> thanks for opening the door. Yes, missed. 